In this episode of Keeping It Real On Location, our very own Jeff Manson, founder of Real Geeks, travels to Ocean City, New Jersey to hang out with Jeff Quinton and his team. We catch them prospecting, booking appointments live, using their scripts, and sharing their marketing strategies and systems with us. As we interview each member of the team, we dive deep into the organization of Jeff Quinton's business as he explains the role of his team members. He shares how his listing coordinator and closing manager are able to give amazing service to their clients. We also catch him and his agents live, working expires and their center of influence. Things get exciting when his listing specialist, David, is prospecting and sets an appointment with an expired listing. Through persistence and intense follow-up, see how this team powers through to reach their goals and crush it. All right, hey, I'm really excited to be here in Ocean City, New Jersey, on location with Jeff Quentin, good friend and an awesome real estate agent. And Jeff and his team have been so kind to let us come and shadow them, hang out, and, and Jeff's, um, him and his team have been just awesome. They've uh, been letting us tag along with them, watching them role play, um, involved in team meetings and everything. I'm just really excited. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah, man, thanks so much. I appreciate yeah. it. It's a pleasure having you guys here. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited that uh, you uh, are participating in this uh, first, this first on-location hangout, man. Of course. And, um, you guys are crushing it. Can you tell um, the audience just a little bit about yourself, um, how long you've been in the business, and kind of you know your, your story, just real quick? Yeah, certainly. So I got in the business in 1992, right out of, uh, basically out of high school. Um, I previously, um, in high school, had a job working at a bank after school from three to six. Then I ended up going to that, uh, that job itself full time. Was in the loan department upstairs, um, so kind of behind the scenes, then a teller position came available, ended up going to the teller drive through While I worked at the teller drive through uh, the, the, the good fortune that I had there was I got to see um, the realtors coming through the commission checks. So it inspired me and said, you know, if these guys can do it, I can do it. There's guys driving so, through, there's guys driving through and you'd like this, you know, with Porsches and Benzes and, 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 and basically, uh, you know, surfboard racks yeah. and big surfboards on their cars, cashing $3,000 checks. You know, so can you imagine that, you know, the checks that I have were much less at the end of the week than the 3,000. Yeah, working right? in the bed, right? Yeah, exactly. So making eight bucks an hour, whatever it was at age uh, 18, 19 years old. So anyway, I got in the real estate business, ended up going in full time uh, since 1992. And uh, so, you know, advance forward, now doing it, what's that, about 24 years? Or the so. same, I got in in 93. So yeah. we've been in the business about the same time. Exactly, yeah. And now you got a team. Yes. And uh, how does the team look? I mean, you got a team. Um, how many people on your team? So the team I have, and I've, I've built a team out. I mean, I was a solo agent for about eight years or so. <clears throat> Um, from probably 92 to about year 99 to 2000 range. Um, had an assistant, actually one uh, part-time assistant originally, full-time assistant, and then started growing a, a smaller type of team. I don't, I've never really had a very large team as some other people have had. So from about 2000 until till about uh, last year, I've always had a team of about six. It's always been three admin, uh, myself included in production, and two other agents. Now, fast forwarding that today, we are growing, especially this year, um, now that I've joined Keller Williams, sure. and models and so forth are allowing me to do that with expansion. So currently right now, I still have the three admin. So you have three admin? Yep, three admin. Okay. And uh, I have myself, which I'm still in production and fading myself away uh, from the roles that I've been doing before. I've got a listing agent partner. Okay, okay. so one listing agent partner. Uh -huh. yep. I've got a, a full-time buyer's agent. Uh huh. And so there's still the three of us on the, on the, on the uh, uh, the sales side. So, so that's three salespeople, including yourself. Correct. And what I really like about what you're doing, you're a practitioner. Yes. Meaning you don't just, are you're not just building this team and saying, Hey guys, you do this and you know, and kicking back and not doing it. You're actually leading the way and leading by example. And you're in there every day prospecting, right? Yeah. I prospect every day. I've, you know, I've never really let up of not prospecting. Uh -huh. um, I'm not, I would say prospecting as much as I probably need to and or used to. Uh -huh. My roles itself as a leader in growing the team have, have changed a bit. Sure. Um, that's why I have a listing agent partner now. It's taken over a lot of the listing side and, and, sure. the, and the presentation and side. And that's David, right? David, yeah. correct. Yeah. Rock star. Yeah. He's really good. 
Um, all right, hey, we're here live in uh, Ocean City, New Jersey, hanging out with Jeff Quinton's team. And David is uh, one of the key members on Jeff's team, and he's a listing specialist and uh, prospects for sellers, right? Correct, yeah. All right, awesome. And then can you tell the team kind of what you do and what your role is, your day, what your day looks like, and then your objective of every day? Sure. So on a daily basis, we're prospecting for uh, new individuals that are looking to list their property. Um, we primarily try to narrow the search down to fit our criteria for price range, location, and motivation. If they fit all three of those criteria, we're going to go out, meet with them, list them for sale. If they're not quite ready yet, we're going to go ahead and put them in Real Geeks. You're going to put them in Real Geeks, and so you're, you're actually putting sellers in Real Geeks. Yeah, it's a huge tool that we use as an asset to be able to show sellers what's going on with their direct market. Mm -hmm. Um, they are then notified every time a new property comes on the market in their price range or basically a competitor to their property right. and every, one, every time one of them gets reduced. So reduced and actually goes under contract and sold. Exactly, all of those criteria. So they're notified and it gives them a good aspect as to what's going on at the market. That way they don't have to just take our word for it, they can see proven facts of what's right. going on, <clears throat> which is a huge asset to us because ultimately not everybody believes a realtor, you know? Sure. All right, and then so you're doing that, and so you're doing that with expireds, FISBOs, are you doing any FISBOs? Yeah, we do FISBOs here FISBOs? and there. There's okay. not as many as other markets <clears throat> might have because we're still in very much a buyer's market, right. um, but we don't let that slow us down. All right, we're so the, your main source is expireds because mm -hmm. there's a lot of listings, it's a second home market, second so home market, not yeah. a lot of properties sell, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of listings, so there's a lot of expires to call. Yeah. And then do you, uh, when you're dried up on expires, are you guys calling just uh, just listed, just sold? Do you do any of that or does uh, other people on the team do yeah, that? So we have two inside sales associates uh -huh. that were out there doing just listed, just sold calls around mm -hmm. properties that we recently listed or just sold. Um, they'll then tee up appointments for us. Um, myself, I'm primarily focusing on uh, references or referrals from past clients mm -hmm. that we've recently closed, sure. expireds, FISBOs, I do a little just listed, just sold as well. All right. All we right. want to hit it on all different angles so we get our contacts up and our appointments up. So um, your guys' schedule, you start, what, 9 in the morning? Yep, yep. To noon, and you guys all prospect for three hours a day? At least. We're typically around five hours, Jeff and I, because we come in from 9 to 12, no distractions, prospect, mm -hmm. prospect, prospect. And then we're out on appointments, getting taken care of some of our other things that we need to do. And then Jeff and I are typically back here around 536, and we'll work till about 7.38 prospecting So you some make work. some evening calls that you may not have been able to get a hold of people during the day. They exactly. May work. Okay, yep. great. And then primarily you and Jeff are the ones that go on the listing appointments. Correct. Yep. I'm his listing agent partner. So if he's not available, I'll go. If I'm not available, he'll go. And right now his main priority is to help build the team, bring sure. in other sources of income and, and revenue and leads, things of that nature. So I'm primarily taking all the leads that come in, the just listed calls, um, I'm going out there listing the properties. I focus on reducing the properties when necessary and negotiating a lot of the deals as well. All right, and then can you tell us what you got back here? I mean, all you guys seem to have um, different scripts, or not different scripts, but you all have scripts. Mm -hmm. Or actually, this is your scripts book here? Yeah, so these are our scripts books right here. We can pull this out. There's four primary scripts that we, uh, four or five that we stick with, the for sale by owner script can flip it over here when I'm talking to expired and run through the expired script. Pre-qualifying the listing presentation. We never go out on a listing presentation unless they're 100% pre-qualified. The just listed script and the just sold script. All right, great. <clears throat> and then those are uh, objection handlers up on? A lot of these are objection <clears throat> handlers. This is a South Jersey market report, so we have proven statistics that we can share with the sellers when we're talking to them. All right, so when you're talking to them, you've always got that up there, so always you always know it. your market, exactly. and you can let them know exactly what's going on in their specific neighborhood. Exactly, and a huge part of that is the saturation rate. How many properties are going under contract right now and how many are still sitting out there so we can build their sense of urgency to price the property correctly. Sure, sure. Okay, great. And then I'm sure you know the script by heart because you guys do it day in and day out. But you use it as a roadmap just in case you get a little off or, and you kind of go with the client, kind of dance with the script as they say? Exactly. We want to be able to dance with them as much as possible, which is why it's important to understand and know all of them. That way you can go from one to another. I was talking to an expired script earlier. I was talking to an expired lead. They then told them that told me that they might consider selling the property on their own, so I hop over to the FISBO script. I integrate them both together. That way I'm better able to build rapport with them and set sure. an appointment. 
All right. And then the objections are just as you're, you're talking, just the reminders. You probably know most of the objections. You know how to handle them. But you still have them on your board, even though you do this day in and day out, just to remind you, cue you up. Yeah, we have to have them in front of us because there's so, ma there's, there's so many different people that you talk to and you don't want to change what you're saying or how you're doing it. You want to stay consistent while you're doing this job and this process. So we have the objection handling. Every time I say one, my mind goes right to where it is. I know exactly where each objection is. That way my mind goes to it. I read it verbatim, word for word, throw in a little bit of my own spice and get the job done. Right, and then basically one of the key factors um, would probably knowing these so well that you can actually listen and in tune and tune into what they're saying. Right? Of course, of course. It's the best way to actually listen, write down notes, um, and really inundate yourself with what they're looking to accomplish so you can show them a proven method of how we can help them reach their goals. So, so in all reality, it's probably not even a script anymore. It's part of you, mm -hmm. but you have their, them there just to remind you just so they're there. Exactly. Yep. Just so we were able to follow that roadmap down and like you said, eventually get to the destination that you need to get right. to. Right. All right. Great. And is there anything else you want to share with us um, about what you do or, or why you like what you're doing? Um, you're uh, bored up here? <sighs> yeah, man. I mean, I love what I'm doing because my background is from sales prospecting, you know, high pressure, one one and done sales calls for five to ten thousand dollar investments uh, mm -hmm. through internet coaching programs and now i'm able to transition that into helping individuals accomplish their goals for selling real estate and all of our work is done over the phone mm -hmm. and if you don't have good phone skills or you're not comfortable talking to people over the phone um, then you need to get better at, at it if you're in real estate or any business because making f sales calls over the phone helps you save time, which ultimately helps you save money and make more money. And, and actually knowing the scripts is probably very valuable so you don't have to wing it. Mm -hmm. You have a sense of direction. Yep. And also, like I said earlier, listening to them because mm -hmm. if you're worried about what you're gonna say next, you're not gonna tune in to what they're really saying and be able to help them, right? Exactly, yep, I feel the exact same way you just, with what you just said. All right, awesome, man. Cool. Thanks for sharing, man. Thanks, I appreciate it, I can't wait Jeff. to, get, to get, follow you on the uh, script and awesome, watch man. you uh, make yeah, some calls be a good and time. some appointments. So uh, we just brought on, we have another ISA right now that's full-time, and I just made two more hires uh, in the past month or so. So one ISA, mm -hmm. and then you have two trainers, two or two, brand two agents, brand new training. Correct. All and right, which, awesome. Which they'll start, one of, the, one of the two will actually end up starting as an ISA, kind of a junior agent role, right. getting that, that role and then advance to a sales agent. Okay. Same with the current ISA. Um, and then the other agent's an agent, uh, agent uh, referral partner, uh, and there's an expansion office about 20 miles away. All right, awesome. Well, we're going to dive in and interview yeah. some of those people and find out what their roles are. Um, I know that you have three admin. Correct. So, you got one administrative assistant, and that's Terry. Correct. And what is her role? So as, a, as an EA or an administrative assistant, she, she's not only my own personal assistant, she's also the, more or less the team's assistant as well. She's the one that will be the, the what we say would be the contract uh, initiator, contract manager uh -huh. of preparing contracts. So she's going to prepare the contract for sale. Okay. And then she'll take in, take that whole part, facilitate getting it signed by DocuSign to both buyers and sellers, which whoever we're representing or both, and uh, and take care of all of that. So so Terry does that, and then she does whatever you need her to yeah, do. Yeah, the project stuff, whatever I need done, and then she'll you know keep me on schedule. She'll she'll do a lot of the um, the uh, some of the systems management of those. She tracks our numbers. Um, she's kind of the overall person as an assistant to everyone. Yeah, the uh, as a team, and then my own personal assistant as well. Nice. Okay, and then you have a listing manager. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And that's Lauren. Correct. And uh, you have what ninety listing or ninety eight listings? Yeah, we're we're average right now. I mean, probably carrying you know ninety ninety five roughly at any times. We've been over a hundred and but back down in the eighties, but typically around ninety or so. Awesome. And her role is to. So her role is the time the listing is, is taken, uh -huh. taken all the way from listing contract, uh, listing signed, sure. all the marketing, all the showing, uh, feedback, taken all the way through until it goes under contract, basically. And, and so and so she's communicating with the seller. Correct. On a regular basis. Exactly. All right, great. Okay, so so Lauren, so you handle the new listings. You actually handle the, you set up the whole listing packet before Jeff or Dave, or David go out on the listing appointment? Yes. I'll set it up before they even go out. So they have uh, two copies, one for themselves and one for the homeowners themselves so they can keep a copy. Um, I put together, Jeff has a special um, Cape May market report, Atlanta County market report, 
specific to each place that he's going. All right, so he does that and then you put that together for him for the listing appointment. So that way they're prepared to go over all that information along with the market analysis and the other stuff and, and all the paperwork. And you have it all pre-filled out for them? Yes, I'll pre-fill it out for them and have it ready for them to pick up. All right, awesome, all right, great. And so let me ask you a question. Um, once they, they bring the listing back, they obviously bring it back to the office. And then what is the process once they bring a signed listing back and, and what's your function? Um, I know you mentioned that you reach out to the seller. How quickly do you reach out to the seller and introduce yourself? And then also, what, what do you do or what kind of system do you guys have for follow-up? And what do you use? We have a honeymoon checklist. So in that honeymoon checklist, as soon as that listing gets to my desk, I am calling and introducing myself to the clients, letting them know that I've received it, okay. that I'm working on placing the property in their MLS sheet, and also going over all their contact information. All right, nice, okay. And then do you then update them and let them know how frequently you're gonna follow up? Or, or, or how frequently do you follow up, let's say if there are no showings, or just uh, do you have a normal cadence? Yes. In the first um, week that they're listed, I will speak to them every day that I am here in the office. So the first week, week you yes. talk to them, what, four or five times? Yes. So you smother them with love. Yes. Awesome. So I hit them really hard the first week. The second week, I'll maybe hit them two or three times, depending on if there's a lot of showings. Of course, I'll reach out to them more. Mm -hmm. I make sure that each system that we place them in from our showing time, our Infusionsoft, personal emails, that they're retrieving them. Uh -huh. and that they have taken a chance to look over them. If they have any questions about any documents that we're sending them or anything. All right, so let's let's dive in a little bit deeper. The showing time, what does showing time do for you guys and how does that help you and also help the seller? Really? Um, showing time pulls all the information from our MLS, uh -huh. from the address to the entry date. It will show us how many days on the market for the back end and any price changes. We will also update all the contact information so for showings, you can do an email, phone, or text message. So showing time is basically our desk for showings. The agent will call into showing time. Showing time has instructions from us on how to contact our clients. It will call the clients, confirm or deny or request a new time. Okay. And then we can block out times on the back end too for if the customer is having friends down for three days and they don't want showings they can schedule it where there's no showings. All right, so so in your MLS and, and in this marketplace, that the agent actually contacts the seller direct? No, they contact showing time, which showing oh, and time then pre-qualifies the agent. Pre-qualifies them and then and sets it up with the sellers. sellers. Okay, and then notifies the seller yeah. there's a specific showing. Yes. All right, great. And and then after um, the, the, let's say the buyer's agent has the showing, if the um, showing time sends them an automatic mm -hmm. feedback, which we have customized five different questions, and it goes over how you rate the showing of the property, mm -hmm. how would you rate the price of the property, um, how easy was the access to the property, and any additional questions, concerns that they have for us at the back end or for the customers. <clears throat> All right, and that comes back to you, and then do you have it set up to go? It automatically goes to our um, clients. So it audit so you have it, you, there's probably a setting on it, I would yes. imagine, but you guys have it set up. So as soon as they give that feedback, it comes to you and as the listing um, manager and also the client. Yes. So you know the client just got this. Yes. All right, and have you found that like uh, the, the it's showing time, right? The showing time has helped you guys get like price reductions too? It has. Okay. In past, it actually has diagrams. So it pulls where um, 12 agents may say you're overpriced and one said it was not priced. So it shows them the diagrams. Nice. So it makes it a lot easier for the customer to kind of realize it's not just us telling you. Right. So they're getting the real feedback from the real agent that's actually showing these people. So it's not you, the listing agent, and they don't think that you're just beating them up to get the price down. It's the actual market talking to them. Yes. That's great. And then um, I know you mentioned Infusionsoft. Yes. Infusionsoft is a custom <clears throat> web page that Jeff has made for himself. Uh-huh. Basically, it is a contact book, but it also ran, runs campaigns, it's right. lead sheets. He can send tasks to each member of the staff to do various things to different clients. Okay. For me, it has automatic call update reminders for the staff to stay on top of staying in contact with our clients. Uh -huh. Also, it is completing even after we've closed the transaction with a client. 
it is still reaching out to them as however campaign we put them in. So like a past client, client center of influence yes. one, so it keeps dripping on them for referrals oh, and stuff like that. Yes. Awesome, great. And I know he's also using it, so he's using it for active listings, and uh, once they close, and there's probably a closing sequence, past clients asking for referrals. All right, great. Um, what were some of the other programs that you had mentioned? Top Producer. Um, Top Producer is a system that is just our database mm -hmm. of clients. Sure. We have over 40,000 clients in there that we have dealt with in the past or are in the present. Um, it makes our spreadsheets easier, so I can go in and pull out each of our clients that we have active. Mm -hmm. I can see all the information that we have from the client, if they've sold different properties, um, how we stay in communication with them. If we have a note about them, we can place it in there. Okay, awesome. So, you know, Great. the big question is, is I know that, uh, I, so I know Jeff and, and the team does a lot of business. So how many listings you guys currently uh, are, are you currently servicing? Because it's just you, right? And you guys got to be really efficient. Yes, right now we have 98 um, clients that are active, that are getting a lot of different inquiries and things like and, that. And you're, and you're able to keep up on all that with all the systems that Jeff has put in place. Yes, sometimes it's very hard, but I make sure. it a point to make sure that I try and contact them at least once a week, whether it's email, call. So, so you're contacting every listing at a minimum once a week. Me, yes. Right, and at the beginning a lot more, but they're also being contacted with the showing time and all the other feedback, right? Yes. All right, great. With Real Geeks, as the mm. clients come in, the first step that I do is I do a sold search through our website and assign them to a sold search in their price range that they're selling their property at. So each week they will get an update with the properties that have sold in the area at that price range and the bedrooms and baths and things like and that. And that was a, a brand new seller, correct? Yes. So a brand new seller, you're, you're putting them on a sold search and they're also, with that sold search, they get a saved market report too. So they're also with the sold safe search, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, um, they actually get a market report and that goes out monthly to them. Yeah, and we've actually had a lot of customers doing that. Um, like Buddy Blake down in uh, Wilmington, he's actually been getting price reductions because of the market reports. And um, how do you hand that off? So like, so like you or David go out on a listing appointment, sure. and uh, how do you, uh, I mean, people are, that are watching would probably like to know like how do you handle that, and how do you tell the seller or inform them that you've got a team and that you got role players that are gonna actually give them better customer support. Yeah. I'm sure that's part of it. Sure, you know, we're, we're always gonna explain the team uh, benefits and uh, what's in it for them. Um, and everyone's basically, we're gonna be able to, the pass off is we're gonna explain to them all the team roles. Uh -huh. When they hire us, they hire not only just myself, but they also get the benefit of seven other people in the team, right. or whichever it would be at the time. Sure. Um, so, for example, on the listing side, uh, we're gonna explain to the sellers that Lauren's our listing manager, she handles all the paperwork involved, she's gonna be in touch regarding requesting information, whether uh -huh. it's a property being sold furnished or unfurnished, if it's a high-rise condo that's an association, she's gonna have all that done. Got it. We also then have, through our systems, uh, you know, emails that will be sent out uh, introducing her mm. and and also there'll mm. be a drip email going out about things that she's going to need is that is that done through infusion software you do a software, lot of yeah. infusion it's software. all automated through that we've all different stages <coughs> of things that'll go out so uh, not only is it introduced to them as a verbal introduction but also we're gonna and, and also in our seller package sure we have in there the roles of everybody so you have the whole team yeah awesome. whole team light out this is everyone's position all right so once you go under you know once you list with us Lauren's gonna be your main contact to know about feedback she's gonna be in touch with you right. she's gonna be updating you she's gonna be sending all that stuff certainly we're available however Lauren's gonna be the management side of all of it while me and the rest of the team are out looking for buyers for your property. Nice. Um, okay. The moment the property goes under contract, you know, yeah. then it's going to get passed to Tom. To Tom, and Tom's the escrow closing manager. Is that Correct. what you call? Or is that yeah. what the proper title yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, we call it in the East Coast here. It's really just the closing manager, closing, closing manager. Yeah. Okay. We don't Great. ultimately have open escrows, closed escrows, because we don't. We're not an escrow state. <laughs> I'm from the West Coast, yeah, yeah. so we have escrows. But okay, I get closing it. manager. Yes. All right. Yes. So all right. Great. And then Tom takes it over, and then Tom's role is to I would assume to communicate with uh, all sides, whether it be yep. buyer or seller. Correct. And then probably set of uh, inspections and do all that. Does he personally go on the inspections? And yeah, so so typically what, what Tom will do is from the time the contract is signed, let's say, so, so Terry gets it all signed up 
and it's now, now delivered back to each party or whoever the party representing with a congratulations letter. It also say in there saying there that uh, you'll be hearing from our closing manager Tom, mm -hmm. and the file and everything moves over to Tom. Right. So from time the contract signed all the way through to the closing, Tom will take <coughs> care of all all uh, all aspects and tasks in there. So ordering the title and home inspection, handling home inspection issues, sure. insurances, termite on the buyer's side, ordering the deed on the seller's side. He takes care of all of the back end, all the processing. Awesome. All right, I'm here uh, with uh, Tom, one of uh, the members of Jeff Quinton's team. And Tom, can you, um, what, what is exactly is your role with uh, Jeff? Well, my title is a closing coordinator, closing manager. Uh -huh. um, basically what happens is uh, once a property, a listing or a buyer goes under contract, okay. the contract comes to me and then sure. I take the process from there and one with it to closing. So um, I coordinate everything with buyers, sellers, agents, um, title companies, mortgage companies, insurance, uh, you name it. Home inspections. Home inspections, uh, CO inspections, which I was just on the phone with. Right. Uh, so yeah, I have to coordinate all that, make sure everything's getting done on time. So, so you're coordinating, keeping that the, the contract uh, to close Correct. on track, yep. and then you, uh, you're communicating uh, with your guys' clients? Correct. And you're yeah. the main point of contact right. once the, yes. it goes under contract? Yes, once it's under contract, uh, everybody else is pretty much out of the picture. The agents are back to their prospecting. Sure. Uh, Lauren and uh, Terry, who handled the contract, uh -huh. is uh, mm -hmm. back to doing what they do. They, they go back, they hand it off to you, and then Correct. you communicate. And right. do you have uh, any kind of processes or software that you guys use? to? Because, to, to, I mean, how many escrows are you guys managing um, generally at one time? Well, on any given time, 25 to 30. 25 to 30, uh, It okay. could get higher. Sure. Springtime, we're a little busier, 35 to 40, but uh, this, right. right now at this time, about 25 to so 30. So it can get pretty hectic at yeah, times, right? Yeah, crazy. And then, so what software or processes do you do you use so you can stay in communication with the client and also um, just keep everything scheduled and so you know what to do? Right, well, we're still, uh, we're using Top Producer still, and okay. we're also using Infusionsoft the past year, uh, which is a good, uh, good form of, Keeping me in line, uh, you know, I get notifications, task notifications, basically through Infusionsoft when something is due or. Okay, so the so the time, basically the timeline of the contract, Correct. all the inspections Correct. when uh, loan approvals due yeah. or uh, inspection removals, exactly. do stuff like and that. And I and I still do th some things the old-fashioned way with. Uh, <laughs> Handwritten notes. Sure, of course. Yeah. Okay, all just right. So to, just to kind of coordinate it all, you know. But sometimes so, it's nice to. So have I guess you guys have probably customized uh, Infusionsoft to do that, and right. then probably every contract when it goes in, you probably have a what a basic format with all the items that are generally in there, and then you just go and plug in the dates. That's correct. All right, all right. awesome. Yeah. And then how do you stay in touch with the clients? Uh, primarily emails and phone calls. Um, okay. I do like I. I do prefer email only because I like to have verification of a lot sure, of record. things that, yeah, records, right. written right. records. Great. So, uh, of course, I still have to call them constantly, but. Um, All right, and that's, you got an important role, right? Right. Because yeah. if you don't give good service, you guys aren't going to get referrals and repeat that's business. Right. And I know that Jeff, from his interview, he said that you guys do a fabulous job and give great customer service, so you get a lot of returning customers. That's the goal. All right, right. Th thanks a lot for sharing with us. No problem. Right. Awesome, so it sounds like a well-oiled machine. Yeah, everybody knows their roles. I mean, we, we have it set up so we understand this. One is the salesperson side is the income generating side. Sure. The admin side is the income servicing side. So we make it very clear within our team whose roles are responsible for what. Now, we're responsible for providing and creating sales. Sure. They're responsible for closing and making sure we all get paid. Right. So their role as admin is very, very important. It's very, uh, it, it's critical. Um, you know, at the same time, we always say this too, like, you know, these uh, salespeople, as you know, we go out and make all these promises, right? Sure, yeah. We promise the world. Right. So we make the promises, the admin team. They have to deliver. They have to keep them. Right, and, and, and another thing, I, I really think if you put together a, a good team like you've done, a good escrow or a good, you know, good closing manager, good listing and everything, and basically if you guys give awesome customer support, it's gonna help the sales team later on sure. for getting uh, referrals and um, repeat business and yeah, stuff exactly. like that, right? Yep. 
Of course. So it's it's just a cycle. It cycles around. So everybody's just on one team. Yeah. And and you know and also part of an incentive you know with regards to the listing side and 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 the closing side, uh, some of the bonus structures we have not only just their hourly or salary you know, position, um, <coughs> they also get bonus on production. We have that. Right. So it's it's important for those guys to get deals closed because they also. Um, uh, are able to get paid out on a, on right, a large right, great. bonus. Uh, I'd like to dive in a little bit deeper about your team and sure. your meetings and how frequently you meet with them and kind of what's the agenda, the goal, and what do you cover in those meetings? A couple things we do. One is each morning we have a team huddle. Sure. And that's just the salesperson side. Okay. So that's 815. We all dial into a conference line. It ends at 830. Mm -hmm. um, and that call is basically, it's around couple things, three things really. It's okay, what are, what, we all know what the annual goals are typically, sure. but what's your goal for the month? Mm -hmm. Where are you within that goal? What are you gonna specifically do today, specifically to achieve that goal? Right. And then each person goes around and, and states what their commitment, what they're committed to for that day, or maybe what their three priorities are sure. to get them closer to it. Right. And state that so everybody understands where they are within it and everyone's sharing. So that's just an, a daily huddle uh -huh. on the sales team. It's kind of a, a, a meeting. Sure. Uh, now ours is, you know, it's accountability that 815, if you're, if you're, if you come on the call at 8, 818, three minutes later, uh -huh. then you need to buy lunch for the office for that day. So that's done via call. Everybody via call. calls it. Everywhere, wherever they are. Okay. Somebody, a lot of us have kids, so at 815, sure, of course. depends on the time of year, you're dropping kids at school, school bus, whatever. Right, okay, great. So that's every day. So then also on Mondays at 130, I have a sales team meeting just for the sales guys. Just the sales. Team. Yep, and that's typically just going to be working on mindset, skills, productivity, where we are, different topics. We're going to do uh, a 411, so it's through the KW system about your ultimate goals, and then your your uh, so so you have an ultimate goal, um, then you have a monthly goal, and then a weekly goal, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at that, look at all those things each week, and that's each month is going to change, and it's all different categories where you are. So working on that as a team. So that's Mondays at 130. And then on Tuesday at 12 noon for an hour, we're gonna have a whole team meeting. Sure. Where we all get together. And you know, the team meeting itself, um, it depends on <coughs> where you are in it. We, we are, our focus is always working on the business, right? Sure. And it's kind of like, you know, uh, what Tony Robbins always talking about, it's constant, ever ending improvement, right? Right. The can eat system. And always looking at how do we be more, more innovative? How, what's our marketing doing? Right. How can we get market share? What can we do improvement on? And then we also dive into, you know, what are some of the things that are breaking down? What are the problems? What are the issues? We like to use the word issues and then the solutions toward them to make things more streamlined and the communication. Sure. We start the meeting out, um, you know, ultimately always with a win. You know, we go around the room. All right, give me some wins for the week. What, right. do, you, what, do, you, uh, what do you appreciate? What are you um, uh, grateful for in your lives? Whatever it may be. Because so it could be anything, not it just could be business. Anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and you know, it's, it's interesting because you know, some people just sit there quiet. I'm like, man, you know, you gotta, get, I mean, you gotta give me something. I mean, you gotta, right. if you're not grateful for something, or, or have a win in life, you shouldn't be here. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like, like, you know, it's tough for some people to think about that because they're just in their daily oh, grind. Like, oh, well, what happened to me? Right, you know? So I want to get them thinking in a good sure. mindset about what they're, what's most important, what they're grateful for. Right. So wins is where we start. Um, we're going to uh, then uh, maybe um, acknowledge someone on the team for whatever they've done in the last week or two, whatever right. they are, okay. you know, whatever it is, awesome. uh, you know, give them some gratitude for that. And then we're going to move into the numbers, kind of the state of the uh, union or month or whatever. Uh, okay, so Tom's going to deliver. Where are we now? What's our closed numbers, unit-wise, mm -hmm. volume-wise, pending uh, numbers, pending-wise, um, total numbers, and then what's our goal for the year? And then subtracting out typically, um, you know, whatever month we're in. How many more months left? And what numbers do we need to hit each and every month to hit the goal? So, so kind of where you're at and where you need to go. Yes. Yep. Awesome. So. We're going to do that in the first beginning, and then we're going to go into whatever the next topic or subjects are. Sure. Sometimes it's systems, it's communication, uh, projects that we're working on. Um, you know, just how do we take more market share? How? What are? What, what's the ways to go from 20 listings taken a month to 40? What do you guys think? How can we implement that? So then we're going to talk about some things brainstorming, and then typically we're going to close with, um, you know, what everybody's in role uh, role within that that we might implement from those ideas. And awesome. then, then we'll follow up next week. How did you do this? You know, what happened? All right, some accountability yeah. and, and come together and, exactly. and, as a team and, mm -hmm. and focus on the goal. Exactly. <clears throat> and then what about the agents on the individual goals? Um, what, what do they do to, to, to focus on that? So I have um, uh, mm -hmm. meetings with individual agents. Uh, typically it's weekly. It's sometimes it's by, by, it depends on the schedules, what's going uh -huh. on. Um, they have business plans. Sure, they have so we have a business plan. 
uh, that's in each one of their folders and each of my folder I keep for them, so keep them accountable. Mm -hmm. And that all breaks down basically on that 411 plan as well, kind of it's the big plan, the big right. objective. And then everybody and then within. everything's smaller. Also in that, you know, I want to always know from them what their goals are in life, right? So places they want to go, things they want to have, things they want to do. So I have all of them write down basically five things in each of those categories, places I want to go, things I want to have, things I want to do. Give me the top five um, with all of that. Right. I, I noticed when I was walking through your office, they all had like a board too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, we're always, we always want them to basically have uh, you know, those, those uh, items, right? Right. And, the and things they want to go, yeah, what, what they want to go, where they want to go. Basically uh -huh. in front of them, like they say, in general. And what I know is that, you know, look, if I can help all of my team members achieve their goals, sure. and they feel like they're getting closer to their goals, they're going to achieve the team's goals or my goals for the team, whatever right, it may right. be, buy into it. So part of that is, you know, I want them to always build a dream board. Sure. Okay. And have on the dream board their vision, right? So what is it that they want? A lot of it's cosmetic, some of it's spiritual, some of it, whatever it is. Right, yeah, it's the vision in their mind, where they are, where they're going. Um, have it in front of them because there's days, you know, you and I know, Yeah. we're grinding, man. We're on the phone, we're prospecting, you're getting beat up. You know, you're going to appointments, not always getting them, whatever yeah. it may be. And then sometimes you get discouraged. Well, when you come back and you can know and see the goals and dreams you have in front of you, that will remind you, yeah. this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. This right. is my why, this is what it's about. Yeah, so they probably have like cars, vacation, spiritual, yep. maybe physically, maybe their family up there because, you know, hey, that's why they're doing it every day because they want to make a better life for the family. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of how we keep them accountable and, and their goals and then a business plan and look at the numbers. And in addition to that is for accountability, every single day the salespeople have to log into a link and report their numbers every single day. So everybody knows their numbers and everyone's everybody knows tracking their numbers. Their numbers. Uh, so we're looking at context made, appointments set, listings taken, buyer sales, reductions, days worked. That's typically the numbers we're looking at for right. the ratios. Sure. And they're putting them there each day. There's accountability for that too. So our sales team basically uh, works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and uh, Saturday. Okay. Thursdays and Sundays typically we take off. I mean, for the sure. most part, uh -huh. where, it's, where Thursdays and Sundays, you're not gonna come to my office at nine o'clock and see everybody in there uh, prospecting in our, sure. in our, in our call center. Um, so it's really a four day specific, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, call center prospecting nine o'clock until noon. Nine Everybody. till noon, everybody's, everybody's calling, expired, yep. center of influence, buyer out. leads yep. coming off yep. the internet, exactly. Zillow leads, all that good stuff. Correct. Saturdays, you're gonna see that as well, but it's a little lighter because in the resort market, especially in this time of year, sure. um, appointments are being made on Saturdays and Sundays. So sometimes it's a little tough to juggle the nine to 12 when people had to be here. And then this time of year, with tenants coming in and out. We only have a time between 10 and two to show properties right. if they're rented. Okay. So that's a little bit different. <clears throat> so we, we juggle a little bit. So it's a four solid prospecting day slash five. Okay, you know? good, good. And, and then it's three hours a day. And then every team, every sales team member. So every sales team member does that. And then what about practicing? Because I know you guys all use um, scripts and, and, and everything and follow the yeah. scripts. So everyone's required to have at least four role play partners. Uh -huh. uh, on the team, and typically we want them to be role playing before prospecting. Sure. So some are at 8:15, some have 7:30 role play partners. But but ultimately the goal is say 8:30 role play partner. Our, our team in the morning is 8:15 huddle call. Everybody joins on the huddle, and then eight. It's only 15 minutes because a lot of them do have 8:30 role play. Right, right. So 8:30 role play, nine nine o'clock on the phone, all the way to noon, and then some are role, role playing in the afternoon as well, based upon someone in another time zone. Sure. So someone in another time zone, maybe at 8.30 their time, mm -hmm. say California, which is, then, which is now 11.30 or you know, nine o'clock to noon, whatever, you know, right. our time. So, so they're all role playing and it's a great way to warm up, right? right. It's, it's the best. And, and really internalize the, the script so they don't have to think about what they're saying. They can actually focus on the prospect and listen and then take the conversation where it needs to exactly. go. Exactly. You know, like a lot of other teams, we're, we're very uh, lead generation based, you know, sure. we're prospecting each day. We're very proactive that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're using all the tools and technology, but at the same time, we also understand. Um, here's what we call it: it's called humology, right? So it's part human, part technology. Mm -hmm. You got to be part human. You got to have the sales skill, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, so we work on skills all the time, and then you take advantage of the technology as well. Combine the two, and and you know, you can. Yeah, technology is kind of trigger. It yep. kind of triggers yeah. and identifies. It's, it's kind of an identifier, right? And it helps you follow up with these massive databases to, to tie, or contact the, the people when it's time. Exactly, and it's, 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 you gotta take advantage of that. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, I mean, other than that, we've covered a lot of stuff as far as what our business looks like on sure. a daily day basis and uh, the and structure. And, and, you know, we're all, um, uh, as, as a team, and plus me, I've, I've been coached for a long time. So sure. we embrace coaching and one-on-one -on -one yeah. coaching and, and being involved that. Yeah, you've been coached forever and take advantage of going and, and, and we're all uh, uh, personal development based, education based, pouring ourselves back into that. So you guys all got goals. Yep. You all follow a schedule. Mm -hmm. A huge schedule. That's one thing we are, I mean, I am on them. Discipline schedule, especially when it comes to lead generation prospecting. Yeah, and well, every it's single important. day. You got to be consistent, right? Every day. You, uh, with anything you do, you can't just do it now and then. You got to be consistent. Yeah. And it's like working out. You got to exercise the muscles. You're either growing or shrinking, right? That's right. All right. You can't coast downhill, right? No, not at all. Or no, yeah. You can't coast uphill. Uphill, yeah. That. Right? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like that. Right. So, so that's great information about your team. So the, the team as it's as a whole, you have a goal for 2016, and it's a, it's a nice goal. Yes. Uh, what is that? So our goal is 200 transactions. 200 deals. Yep, 200 total deals. Uh -huh. uh, and that's close and pending. Um, and <clears throat> just because we're, we primarily work in a resort market, mm -hmm. now we work, we work the primary home market as well, which is a little bit more stable as far as uh, consistency. Sure. Uh, in our resort market, it's you know our, our spring markets, about 60, 65% of our business. So like the February through May, you know, those kind of four months, February, March, April, May, basically. Uh, kind of dies. Yeah. Well, no, no, that's our, oh, that's, oh, our that's, so hard. Yeah, okay, that's like so 60% there. So we got to uh, we got to front load our- Front our, load our, and then our, roll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then where are you year to date? Just about a hundred or so. Just about a yeah, hundred, okay. 100. So we were, we were above a hundred, had a couple of deals just kind of go sideways on mm. us last week. Then we're putting mm. new, just put two more together. So we're just around just about a hundred or so. And then how many closed and pending? That would be that would be the hundred. Okay, so yes. so like yeah. what seventy? Like seventy five closed, closed twenty five pending. pending. Yeah. All right, great. And when we, uh, have, when we just close, you know, like five or six on Friday, the 29th of the month, we've got a bunch, eight or nine. And and, and I mentioned, I think you mentioned earlier, um, but you have what a hundred listings, about a hundred listings, ninety ninety five, yeah, yeah. ninety ninety five, great. We carry a lot of inventory. Yeah, because yes. it's a market that's not. Yeah, our market's on. not. I mean, it's not like some of the other markets throughout the country where you know you you list a property today and you get multiple offers on it and you're going to close, mm -hmm. you know, or be done. You know, our our mm -hmm. average time frame. It's, it's it certain depends on where you are. Uh, the Atlanta County market is unfortunately still depressed. A huge buyer market. We're not, we're oh, not is in the that AC, market. Atlanta yes, County? Exactly, Atlanta County. Consider Atlantic City, which uh -huh. is, you know, which is a really tough market right now. But you guys are what? I'm all mixed up. I don't have my bearings. So yeah. you're, we're in Ocean City. That's south of the South. City. Okay, yeah. so everything south is getting, is it's picking good. up and it's getting better. better. Yeah, okay. and along the islands along the way. Once you go on the mainland side over the bridges, uh -huh. the primary home market, that market's depressed, unfortunately, right now. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. So we only have maybe at most in those markets maybe five to seven percent tops of the inventory per month selling. Right. So the 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 second home markets picked it's up. It's moving in but the then, south. Yeah. Okay. They were maybe around ten percent. Great. Great. All so right. So you got to keep in mind if you have a hundred listings, mm -hmm. you know, at any time, at the market is going to say that you might only sell eight percent of them. That means eight a month. Eight a month. Yeah. Okay. So you got to so that, that so, the so you got so be, you got eight a month, and then that's listings, and you that got buyers, and some of them you double dip and Correct. stuff like yeah. that. So um, of the two hundred deals, based on your past and where you're currently at, what percentage are sellers and what percentage are buyers? We've been around the 65, 35. 65, 35. Yeah. 65 listings, right? Correct. Okay, and yeah, thirty-five. It's, been, it's anywhere between 60, 40, 65, 35. Sure. Okay. Great. And. Um, of the 65% the, the of sellers, um, what are your best uh, sources for leads and sure. which ones are, where do you get most of your business? So on the seller side, um, we, we certainly have a, a large database. Sure. Of also, of the database, we have, um, well, the database is broken up in all different ways and segmented, sure. but uh, we have a lot of past clients, center of influence, uh -huh. and referrals. So, so, right. so the bulk is center of influence, past, yes. past clients, referrals. Yes. And that's the importance of having a good team, too. Exactly. Right? Yep. So a good service there. So all right. that's a good source there. The next second source, mm -hmm. uh, the majority mm -hmm. of that is all is expires. Right. So it's not about expires, it's not about new expires and old expires. Of the expires, though, uh, I would say we, we dominate more in the older expires. Yeah than we do in the newer expires. And can you think, okay, so what I, I wanna stop right there um, and just back up. Of the, I wanna get back to expires in a minute yep. because I wanna know how you guys work them. So the center of influence and past clients, sure. and you have it in a database, can you go through the processes of how you work that and why sure. you think you're doing really well? 
So you know, each each day uh, we get a, a different call list of who's in our database. We uh -huh. segment that list as far as how they need to be called. Or they're what we call is, uh, a top 100 client. You know, someone that refers to us all the time, a VIP mm -hmm. client. We have an A client, which is going to call about every 90 days. A double mm -hmm. A client every 60 days. Um, and then B client every six months. So we're constantly calling our clients, um, you know, staying in touch with them, depending on how they're segmented. In the sure. Group. So we're, we're prospecting them. So prospecting them nonstop. Yep. And then um, what systems are you dripping on them with or, or keeping in touch with them? Yeah, so as far as the, the systems are concerned, as far as like uh, in the database, we have Infusionsoft. Sure. So we put everybody in um, our, what we call a past client center of influence uh -huh. and drip campaign. Sure. So they'll typically get some emails, about two emails per month uh, from us with regards to some educational base, something in general, sure. keeping them top of mind of what we're up to and, and positioning ourselves ourselves as a real estate uh, expert, you know, and, right. and also the resource right. in the marketplace. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we do that, number one. Uh -huh. uh, we're also then, all of our uh, our past clients and sure. our sellers, uh -huh. we're also putting them in, you know, your site as well, you know, the Real Geek site. So, uh -huh. we're able to put them in as a uh, as a sold search, because uh -huh. they're their current owner, as a homeowner. Right. We put them in there, and uh, we also drip on them from receiving market reports right. of properties that are getting sold, and then whatever's happening within the criteria, we put them in. So, they're always getting something there. So, they're constantly getting called, they're constantly getting dripped on with yes. some stuff from Infusionsoft. You put them into Real Geek system, put them on a sold search, so that way, you guys are actually sending them sold properties. Exactly. And uh, also when they put you put them in a sold search, they're also getting that monthly market exactly. report. Yep. And they're getting other market reports, they're getting a newsletter, they're getting uh -huh. a market report as far as statistics. Sure. And we're also doing videos as well. Right. You know, so we're giving educational based videos, sending out virals. Oh, with viral that. marketing, yep. okay, yep. great. Viral's done that for us for a long and time. And they do two, two a month? Two a month, yeah. Okay. So we're, you know, we're always in front of them. We've got a, a huge mind share, you know, I guess, mm -hmm. created for them. And that's on both buyers and sellers. We're doing basically the same thing on both sides. Sure. You know, not right. just seller side with the database, mm. but the buyer side, we're doing the same thing as far as educational based information, putting them in the active okay. sold act, or active right. sold. And uh, are you searches. doing anything with the Facebook marketing with your database yet? We were doing a little bit of it. Uh -huh. I'm not so sure we were doing it the right way. Right. You know, okay. and, and, uh, and so that's one thing that we need to do a little more of. Right. We have our we have different uh, databases segmented. Um, in, in Infusion Soft, it, right? In Infusion Soft neighborhoods. Well, by zip codes. Yes. By zip code, perfect. Yeah, yeah oh, exactly. Good enough. Yeah. All right, yeah, what I would suggest, and a lot of our other customers are doing is, because you're a big listing agent, right? So when you get a listing in that neighborhood or that zip code, I would be using our Facebook marketing tool. Sure. And um, putting up, a, so uh, what is it? It's like a Lauren, link, a link, Lauren. A link. so yeah, Lauren yeah. can go ahead and actually take all, and get all the email lists by zip code name those and create audiences in Facebook, and then she could use our Facebook uh, marketing tool which streamlines it, she can do a, an ad of that listing, two to five minutes, and target that zip code. So not only are you marketing it to people that own homes in that, they may wanna buy another one, but the, you guys are constantly calling them in any way, sure. right? They're in your database, so they'll be go like. So it's basically you're kind of electronically farming. Sure, I'm not a big mail farmer guy, Neither but I think the electronical farming is good because they're constantly calling them, and now they're saying, "Oh, this Quentin team, Quentin team, Quentin team." So that's it, something yeah, I yeah. would work on. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, I mean, I try, I try let's and say there's a lot of thing. eyeballs on Facebook sure. right now. A lot of people are there, so we need to take. Yeah, well, that. here's the deal: you got to go where the attention is, mm -hmm. and everybody's on their phone. And everybody's on social media, so that would be one thing I would try. I w personally, as a friend, um, yeah. that I would suggest you would want to do. All right, so now let's go into expireds. Sure. So, um, can you go through how you guys work the expireds? What processes? How often you call them, yeah. and all that good stuff. So, um, our expired, a couple of things. One is we call them each and every day. Sure. Every single day, and I've got a different, some different automation of that's going on regarding uh -huh. that. So I'll take you through that a little bit. Okay. And why we have why are we more dominant on there. So one is I have outsourced to a, a, a VA in the Philippines uh -huh. that goes and collects all the expired data the way I want it. So they're pulling in the tax record information, the MLS brochure, going into our own database because our database is so large, pulling uh -huh. in to see if we have all their contact information in our own database. If they're not, they're going into different search uh, sure. places to get the phone numbers. Um, you know, through different uh, Intellia, Spokio, People Finders, so many places to go. And she knows how to do all that. So we're getting all that done, and as we're sleeping in the evening, all this data is being collected so that when we wake up in the morning, 
where you know, this is all hitting our our, uh, our sales team inbox. Okay. Print it out, and these are manual. These are manual, you know, or um, uh, paper, you know, basically manual, uh, you know, printouts. Sure. So we have Which that number great one. Which are great because you just manually yeah, dial. Yeah, manually the dial. It's there, and I can see everything, and everything's there. So that's number one. Number two is I also have another gentleman that I, I go to uh, and outsource that also, which is almost like the Red X and the, uh -huh. and the different services, but I've used all them. And um, I'm gonna keep in mind, I'm in a resort market. So when we're looking for the homeowner, it's not the subject property that expired, it's somewhere <coughs> outside of the area. Right, so right. it's a little bit tricky. So I have another person that, uh, that, uh, that I work with um, in California that collects and gets all that information, goes out and gets cell phone numbers and then brings it back in and puts it in my Mojo system. Nice. Okay. okay. So two things happen. One is I have a little paper form from somebody in uh -huh. our database, all the things I want to have. That's there. From your VA from the Philippines. Yep. And they're, they're, they're doing it exactly the way you want exactly it. Exactly the way I want it. Got yep. it. They're going in there in the MLS and everything I want. <clears throat> and, then, and, then also, and then also have it in Mojo so that the guys can come in and we can pull up Mojo and start dialing through there as well and have cell phones and things like that. So that's sure. a couple ways there. Uh -huh. In addition to that is what Leah does in the Philippines, then she takes all the phone numbers that she's able to get from the database and all those numbers and then we put them into a voice broadcast okay every single day so there may only be sometimes 10 there could be 25 there could be 100 depending on how many you know entries there are of how many expired so i think today there's about 30. so what we'll do is we'll do a voice broadcast to all of those those phone numbers sure and so a we'll, voice broadcast is just basically it's a it's a message sure that drips uh, that that lands directly into their voicemail Okay. So there's some automation going on, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, the, so it basically it calls and they have, the automation knows a way to get to leave the voicemail versus a Yeah, it's a, a pre-recorded message that I leave. Sure. Message is simply is an expired mm -hmm. message. Hey, this is Jeff from the Quentin Group KW. You know, we noticed your home came up on the computer as an expired mm -hmm. listing or off the market. And we're calling to see if you're planning to still ultimately sell and, sure. and consider another opinion. Nice. You know, okay. as your home has been off the market or as your home has been on the market that failed to sell in the last six months, we have sold, you know, over 100 homes this year. Sure. We have buyers. Call me if you're interested to know how we can reposition your property. Here's our number. Right. And then how many return calls do you think you get? I think yesterday we got two or three. Two or know? three. Yeah. So you get yeah. so you get a certain percentage, but mm -hmm. you know every little bit counts. Yep. But it's also you guys are personally calling them too. Yep. They're going to so, hear. So yeah, we're bombarding. Mm -hmm. Not I'd say bombarding, but we're we're hitting them in all different ways. Yeah, so you got to keep in mind. I've got their email addresses because I, I have a VA going out and getting them. I have sure. their cell phone numbers. I've got a voice broadcast going. Are you texting going. them? No, we haven't done that. That's what we need to do next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a whole other another yeah. part, you know what I mean? And the text, I'm trying to figure that part out the right way because that, sure. that can be, I don't know if, we got to, that's touchy, it, I think. It, yeah, right you now, can't you know go I mean? too mass. You I can't go crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to figure that out. So, so, uh, so we're getting them in different ways, email, cell phones, voice broadcast. Drip system with email drip and expired campaign that goes out. Sure. They'll get they'll get basically eight email eight emails from us in the first eighteen days. <clears throat> All right. Are you doing yeah. any mail to the, the expired? Mail. No, no mail. mail. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like you, I don't do a lot of postcards. A lot of right, mail. Right. Okay. It's expensive. Um, I, I'm sure it's effective over time, but I can tell you this: I can send a voice broadcast out. <clears throat> let's say there's thirty. Sure. And get two or three calls back. Right. And that. I can have that done. I can send a voice broadcast out. If I recorded the message now and load, uploaded it, it'll be delivered within 30 seconds of all 30 of them. Nice. And I'll reply back. And some people will actually just see that the call ID comes up mm -hmm. and they're calling back from a missed call. <clears throat> so sometimes they're just calling back. Right. Okay. Whether they got the message or not, I don't know. So but that's where our skills come so, in. The so you're doing that. Is there any other systems you're doing? But that's pretty much okay. it. Okay. And yeah. then unexpired. And expired. So unexpired. Um, how many times are you calling them and following up? Because I think that's important. I think a lot of agents, yeah. um, they, they go, I'm gonna call expires. Sure. And they call them once or twice. Yep. And they get some negative people. Yeah. Or they call and they listen to the seller story because they don't know how to keep the conversation going mm -hmm. and don't know how to handle the objections. And they get off and it's, guy goes, I'm just taking off the market or whatever the objection is. Yeah. And then they declare expires are hard to get. But right. you know and I know, yeah. if you keep grinding them, and the guy that follows up the most and is persistent and has sales skills, yes. like you guys do. Yes. Um, so how, how many times do you guys actually call them? So okay. we're gonna, so we're gonna, I mean, ultimately we're <clears throat> gonna call the expired as, as, as often as possible until we get them. Mm -hmm. And then once we get them, we're gonna pretty much be on top of them either until they relist, tell us never to call them again, or we get the listing. 
Got it. So, we're, okay, we're, so we're you just pretty keep, relentless. So it could yeah. be 15 times, it could 20 be. times here's, over the year. Here's what we know, like the MIT study, and this that we have sure, all, yeah. and all hanging in our offices. It's it's between the eighth and twelfth contact is when the sale is made. Right. So you've got to make that. You you just continue, and that's why I mentioned to you, we are we list more of the older expireds yes. than the new ones because we are going like that old expire. We may hit that person that was from day one, uh -huh. and then they didn't relist. And we followed up with them for the last six months. And next yeah. thing you know, we get them listed. On the but 10th they or 12th or 15th contact. Yeah, and, and, you know, and, and ultimately, here's the thing. The older ones, and in this case, people back off. So now no one's calling them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Right? The old ones are And the harder beautiful. they are to find, the easier they are to <clears throat> list. Sure. So if you're calling these expires and no one's answering, or you can't find the phone number or whatever it is, if you do a little digging or have some sources to get them. Sure. I mean, there's so many ways to find people today. You can yeah. Google them, Facebook them, you know, LinkedIn. You can find people today in right, most cases. Right. But you've got to go through that or have it outsourced sure. or figure it out. The easier, it, or the harder it is to get them, the easier it is to list. Because I agree 100%. Because there's no competition. <clears throat> and also, I think the nastier they are, initially on the call, the easier they the, are, the, the they are gonna be down the road. And they're, they're really nasty because they're pissed off all these right. agents are calling, and they want to get their home sold, sure. and then they scare everybody off because they're so freaking nasty. Exactly. And you just gotta keep calling them. Yep, that's right. Awesome. That's, you know, the thing about it is they want someone who's persistent. They want someone who is going to uh, be diligent in that, and you, know, you reverse it on them that wouldn't they want the same type of person behaving that way for the buyer for their home, right? Yeah, trying to sell. Someone is persistent and yeah. working Why as hard. Why do you keep calling me? Well, this is how I, this is the way I follow up with someone who wants to buy just like you want to sell, right, Mr. Right. Seller? Yeah. You had a compelling reason why you're on the market. You had a reason why you want to sell. So the way I'm following up with you mm -hmm. is exactly the way I'm going to follow up with a buyer to get them to decide to buy your home. Right. That's what you want. Yes. Yeah, or, or you want me never to call you again. Right, yeah. You tell me. Right, right. Right? What are you calling? So I'm, I'm hammering through fresh expireds on Mojo, mm -hmm. and then I'm using this phone to call some past follow-ups. Just people who So you're calling them. both? Calling both, right? I'm the dialing four time. lines right now. Four lines right now, I'm gonna right get now. somebody awesome. here. Hello, Mike Bert. David Bachman with the Quinton Group here, Keller Williams, how have you been? I'm so glad to hear that. Well, I know we've been uh, in contact with you for quite some time, and there's been some activity around your property over here in EHT. Were you aware of that? Terrific. Well, we, re we recently listed and sold a couple properties near yours on West Plaza, and we know when one property sells, two more sell right away. So tell me, when do you plan on selling your property? <laughs> exactly, when you know you can get a decent price. I don't blame you. You been down in Florida recently, or are you up here in Jersey right now? Right now you're in Jersey, good for you. And Tell you what, it's not getting any cooler right now, is it? I appreciate that. So, you know, I, I know we've talked to you in the past, Mike, and I know the market wasn't quite where you needed it to be. However, I wanted to call you and personally let you know, I feel comfortable and confident that if my team put to wor the work needed into marketing your property, we can help you get the results that you want. Would you see that as a benefit? I don't want you to give away the house either. So tell me, how much do you want to sell the property for? Okay, I can appreciate that. And I'm just curious, what's the price that you won't go below? Yes, sir. And from netting out. So you want to go below 290, good for you. And I'm just curious, how did you happen to pick that number, 290,000? Sure, yeah, and it's really a toss up right now in Atlantic County, as you know. Do you own some other real estate here too? You said you'd live down the street, right? Okay, so this is an investment property. Have you rented it out? <laughs> well, can you blame them? <laughs> no problem. So I'm just curious. I know your taxes on this property are $6,000 a year, right? Aside from taxes, how much are you putting into the property to just hold on to it on a yearly basis? Okay, no problem. And 
So right now, the, the $15,000 that it's costing you to take money out of your pocket on a yearly basis, how is that affecting you financially to hold on to this property? It was saving you money, how so? Okay. So I understand, plus it's a tax write-off, right? Okay. So, so right now, I, it sounds like you don't have to sell this property, Mike, you just want to, is that correct? It's getting to be a pain, okay. So since you don't have to sell the property, you just want to, aside from it being a pain, what are the other reasons that you want to sell this property? I don't blame you, okay. What else would you do with the money if you were to pull it out of this property? Okay, look into some other opportunities for real estate in Florida, what part? My, uh, my father's from the Sarasota Springs area, is that kind of where you were looking? Oh, terrific. Oh, I love it, okay. So, so if we could help you and we could show you a way that we could help you cash out from this property and, and sell it within the next 30 to 90 days, would that pose a problem for you? Yeah, and that's a valid question. Where is the market right now? And fortunately, I study homes and prices every day. Therefore, I'll assume you'll list with me at a price that will cause your home to sell, correct? Sure. And since then, I've noticed a little bit of an upswing in the market, and I wanted to call you with that report. And I feel much more comfortable and confident that we can help you obtain your goals in a timely fashion. How would it make you feel if we could have this sold for the number that you needed here in the next 90 days? That'd be great. And just by you saying that allows you to understand why it's important for us to be able to meet. So I want to go ahead and put together a little bit of a market analysis this afternoon. What time's better for me to come and take a look at your property, tonight at 5 or tomorrow at 6? So you're back in town from Charlotte, North Carolina, Monday afternoon. Okay. So let me check my schedule here. I'm... Uh, I know I'm wrapped up till about 12 or 12.30 on, on Tuesday. Can we do late afternoon, say four o'clock? Okay, I'll schedule an appointment for me to come out and meet with you Tuesday at four o'clock. And you know, I'm just curious, Mike, if what I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that I can sell your property, are you planning to list your home with me when I come out with and meet with you on Tuesday? Sure. Terrific. So I appreciate your time this afternoon and I look forward to uh, our meeting on Tuesday at four. And in the meantime, I'll email you out some information for you to review how our team operates and works. Is your email address still? Yeah. .com? Yeah. All right, my friend, I appreciate your time. Drive safe from North Carolina, okay? Right, yeah. Have a good afternoon, bye. See, that's how it's done, baby. That's how we set appointments. Boom. All right. So David, <laughs> so you just booked an appointment. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, kind of let us know exactly what the story sure. and the back yeah. story on, on that guy was? So we've been following up with uh, this guy for some time now. His name's Mike. He's uh, in Egg Harbor Township, which is right outside of Atlantic City. The market's a little bit rough over there. I pulled out the pain that this guy wants to cash out and put some money into some other real right. estate opportunities in Florida. Right now he's going in the whole $15,000 just to hold on to the property. So when I come out and meet with him, even if he wants to list it a little bit higher, I'll be able to negotiate it and have him list it at a lower number based upon his pain, which is money coming out of his pocket to pay for it. All right, and how many times um, did you actually have to follow up with this guy? This is at least our sixth or seventh follow up. Sixth or seventh contact. Yep, we've been talking to him since March of this year, and we know we know on our team it takes at least six to ten contacts to for you to get an appointment. Right. So until you continue following up with them, you're never actually going to be able to achieve your goals. So that's why. And we, this was initially an expired. Correct. Yep. Okay. It was an expired with two other real estate agents, and uh, we've been building rapport with them. He's in our database for the past few months. He's been getting emails stripped over to him, and okay. he's actually in our Real Geek system as well. So you can see anything that's sold or it gets reduced in Egg Harbor Township, gets sent to them. So you guys put all these expireds when possible when you get their email mm -hmm. on the Real Geek system so it sends them actives 
uh, price reductions under contracts and sold. Exactly. So they can see the market. You're constantly dripping on with them something that they care about value, right? Rogeeks is one of the biggest tools that we have right now. This way it updates them on the marketplace and it's not the, just them taking our word for it. It's them actually seeing the market and what's happening right. every single day. And, and they think that you guys are personally sending this out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's coming from my email. Right. So of course they do. And that's just the key. I think that a lot of agents that are working expireds don't really, they, they give up after one or two calls. Sure. And you know, and I know, because we've all worked expired for years, that you gotta just keep, the, the person that keeps following up with them and consistently building the report, consistently following up, eventually these guys are gonna um, relist their property and they, want, they ultimately wanna get it sold. Yeah, I remember the first time I called this guy, um, I called him at 9 a.m. He answers, hello, hey, this is David. Could barely even get two words out before he hangs up on me. Right. I wait till four or five o'clock later that evening, call them and have an amazing conversation with them. So it's all about just catching people at the right time and not giving up on them after the first fail. Basically. Yeah, and most agents that start expired, they try it you know, a week, two, three weeks, a month, call people once or twice, they get a little negativity and they give up and declare it doesn't work. Exactly. But if they actually just powered through that and worked that, yep. they would have much more success and they'd be just slaying the uh, expired listings. Endurance, yeah. endurance, man. Mindset and endurance is all it takes. Awesome. Yep. All right, man, let's cool. keep going. Let's push another it. appointment. I like it. I'm in. Hello, is Jeanette there, please? Hey, Jeanette, it's Jeff Quinton here down the shore in Ocean City. How are you from Keller Williams? How you doing? That's good. Hey, I'm just calling and I'm sure you figured out that your property here on Brighton came up on our computer as an expired listing. So I was just calling you to see when you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling this home. Wow, you're kidding. So you're going to try to sell it on your own right now for a while and, and uh, I know you've had several different realtors and they've all just failed to sell it then, huh? No bites at all? You're kidding. Wow. And, and tell me this, Jeanette, I mean, ultimately when you do sell the property, are you thinking of just cashing out of it or will you look to reinvest into something else? Not too sure? Okay, that's good. And I know you've been on the market there, you know, on and off for a little while. I mean, as far as timing is concerned, if we could obviously get it sold for you in the next, say, 30 to 60 days, got the right price, would that pose a problem? I'm sure you've, I'm sure you've heard everything before. I know, no bites. You, you've heard it all, I'm sure, right? I mean, you've, you've been on the market, but well, look, I understand. You've been on the market with, with Fox for a long time. You were then with, uh, with Remax or Lisa Fo or, uh, from, from uh, Berkshire Hathaway next. You've been out there for a while. I get that, you know? Yeah, and then certainly, yeah, no, no. And I think that's a great approach. And, and so as far as timing is concerned, I mean, if you were to sell it then, when would you like to have it sold and closed within? When is a good time frame for you? I understand. Yeah, you just want to get you want to get activity, and you at least want to get an offer, then, right? Yeah, and it's very frustrating sitting on the market month after month after month. And I guess you're on the market, I guess, with uh, with, with Berkshire for six months, and I think you were there before with Fox for another what, almost a year, you know? And so, all kinds of excuses from your agents. Yeah, you don't want to be beat up anymore as far as price. You just want to get it sold, right? Good for you. And if we could, obviously, I mean, I'm not saying that we have that buyer today. I'm not making any promises or, or even saying that I have that because everyone else has been talking all that crap. I'm just saying that if I did provide a buyer, obviously in the next 30 to 60 days or so between now and say Labor Day, I mean, would that pose a problem or would you rather prefer to close in the fall? Certainly. Okay, good. So you, you prefer to close in the fall. You would prefer to close sometime in the fall, right? I mean, but if we found a buyer for you today, just, you know, let's say we did, I mean, you would still be okay with going under contract now if we had that right buyer at the right price, correct? Okay, good. So make sure we're on the same page. You definitely still want to sell it. And, uh, well, Jeanette, let me ask you this. I mean, you've been out there for a while. And, and tell me, I mean, what do you think stopped your home from selling? No clue, huh? Sure. So there's... Ex you are. I mean, you're in the beach block. Look how close to, you know, close to the beach you are. I mean, have you, has your previous agents shared with you any of the feedback from specifically what the buyers were saying? Nothing. You're kidding. Wow. And I mean, are you aware right now? You no know, feedback at all, huh? 
that is irritating because you at least at least you'd like to know what buyers are saying, you know, and if they're looking at yours and buying something else specifically, right? That would be nice to know. Yeah. So I'm just wondering. I mean, how did you happen to pick the last agents you've listed with? You're kidding. So the agent you had before, the phone messages, his voicemail was always full. That's not. That's not good service, huh? <laughs> wow. Well, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, believe me, it can be very frustrating working with these agents, right? Imagine, I work with them all the time, so we experience this as well, you know? So, I'm just curious, I mean, is there anything though that the agents did that you did like best? Not really, huh? Not, not too much. Yeah. Well, so Jeanette, I mean, what do you feel that they should have done? Hire me. Me. Me, me, me. Sure. Yeah, I can tell. Very, very frustrating. So ultimately, I mean, you would have liked to have seen an open house, more feedback, and be at least more, at least be more available, right? And have some communication. Hmm. So you've done some improvements to the property, bringing up to some selling standards and, and, uh, and no, no real good uh, activity or, or feedback on that either then, huh? Wow. Well, Jeanette, let me ask you, I mean, what will you expect from the next agent you choose? If you do decide to choose, what will you expect? More available, okay. Sure. So you're... That's, inc that's incredible. So you don't get any feedback at all. They weren't available. And uh, that's, I can see that being very frustrated. Um, so, I mean, have you then already chosen any other agents to work with? You're kidding. Okay, well obviously, I sure. You're gonna try to do it yourself, I understand that. No problem, and, uh, and obviously, hopefully you can get the job done on your own, and hopefully you know, that, that'll all work out for you. Um, but let me ask you this, I mean, obviously I'd like to apply for the job of selling your home. Are you at all familiar with the techniques I use to sell homes? No? Well, what would be the best time that I could come over and show you guys? Are you down here in the next couple of weeks? Oh, you're home, so you're fully rented right now? Okay, good, sure, no problem. Well, Jeanette, you know, what's interesting is as your home has been sitting on the market at least these past six months, my team and I already the first six months of this year have already sold over 100 homes. So we do specialize in properties that have been previously on the market like yours that have failed to sell with other agents. And then we, re we get them, we reposition them, we get them back in the market with our marketing plan, give them the exposure that the home needs, and then we get them sold. And all the homes that are like yours that have been on the market with someone else that failed, when we do do all of that, we sell them an average of 54 days. So it would have been nice to have you because if you've been listed with us, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. You would have been long gone and cashed out of here. Wouldn't that have been great? Yeah, and so, certainly. Yep. Okay, what is your email? Okay, let me just make sure I read this back to you so I'm correct, okay? So it's .net. Is that correct? I'm sorry. Cool, perfect. And, uh, and, and so here's something that I want to share with you, if I may. See, the good news is right now is in the next 60 to 90 days, our island itself will sell anywhere between 60 and 80 properties for July and August, okay? And then ultimately, once Labor Day hits, and then after September, the mid of September, the marketplace starts to shift a little bit, as you know, you've been around here a long time. The inventory itself tends to rise up a little bit, and then the demand starts to fall. But right now, what's happening is, the next 45 to 60 days, our market is very, very strong. And the reason why it's very strong is, as you know, there's a ton of people in town. And what we say is, you know, today's tenant is tomorrow's buyer. So what we're doing to sell all these homes, even in the summer market, when tenants are here, we're only showing the properties by appointment and we're doing it between 10 and two on Saturdays when they change, you know, they change over times. 
And we have a ton of our buyers, which are our active tenants that when they come down to the shore during this peak selling season, we then capture them while they're here. And then we show them properties the day they check in or the day they leave. So we have a, t a tremendous amount of buyers right now that are here looking. That's why it may be important for you to just consider getting this back on the market because I know you definitely still want to sell it, right? Yeah, so you definitely want to sell it. We just got to let the world know and the buyers know that it's going to be for sale even though you're, you know, you're not actually physically on the market. That's number one. The number second thing is that something you consider, I'm going to send this to you. We have what we call a Q option listing, okay? It allows you to sell the home on your own as well. In other words, you hire us, we market the property, and we go ahead and find, we get all the buyers in the door. We sell it, you obviously pay the commission. If you also reserve the right that if you decide to sell it on your own, you don't pay us anything. So it become a win-win. You can still do it on your own, or you can decide to hire us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send that, that opportunity, that, that, that option for you, for you just to consider that, okay? Because I, I feel very, I feel, yeah, talk to Tony about it. Sure. Well, if you, of course, and, and if you do decide to market on your own, I'm just curious, what methods will you be using for marketing the property? Right, you don't want to disrupt the tenants, they're paying, they're paying good money there. Yeah, no problem. That sounds good, I'm gonna send you my marketing plan, I'm gonna send everything to you, and then in addition to that, we're gonna do an updated market analysis for you as well. I'm gonna show you what has recently sold as you've been on the market, Okay, and then also what your competition is. And I'll make some suggestions for you because I think that one of the reasons why and you know your home failed to sell or it didn't sell was a fact of lack of exposure, okay? And I think it, what we need to do, yeah, it's, of course. And, and then and, you know, when you decide to hire us, you know, you're gonna hire a team. So I've got a team and a staff of eight people. I have a listing manager and all that she does in my office is maintain our sellers like yourself with feedback finding out what the agents are saying about the property, letting you know what's going on in the marketplace so you're always informed, okay? So I know that's important to use to know what's going on and also, have, yeah, and you want some communication, right? So when, they all, believe me. You're, I mean, if I just showed you, for example, last week out of all of the inventory that I have, if I just showed you and I can send you a screenshot to give you an example of what you would expect, but for, I think last week I had about 40, 44 I think was the number, uh, the 44 total showings um, on our properties. And, I, and just to give you an example, so um, just right now, let's see, um, well, about 100 and, uh, I think we've had about, a, I think it's 199 total showings so far in, in uh, this year in all of our listings. We've had, so in the last 30 days, we've had 19, we've had show, eight showings here in the last uh, seven days or so on our listings. But ultimately, you know, we are, we're able to, to look at all the number of showings on your property, find out from the agents what the buyers think about it. Did they like the property? Did they like the location? Did they like the, the condition? What did they think about the price? So that, you know, we're in communication to know what, what direction do we go? Is there something wrong we need to, need to overcome? Or, or, you know, we, we need to know, right? So that's what we were able to do, give you that communication. And what the good news is right now, you know, is that in the last, um, I'll just look this up, in the last about 30 days or so, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's been a lot of homes in your neighborhood that have sold. For example, 855 Delancey is under contract right now. One of your neighbors at 847 Brighton, that just, uh, that just sold. Another one on 4th Street, another one on 3rd Street. Um, you know, there's another one that sold uh, on, up in the, um, the Brighton Place condos there at 908 Brighton. Um, so there's been a lot that's, that has recently sold while yours was sitting, you know, so that's the goal is, I will. Now that's part of the market analysis. I'm gonna send you all those that have, uh, that have recently sold, okay? And uh, t talk to Tony, I will send you the analysis, I'll send you our marketing plan, I'll send you that option about you can still sell on your own. We'll make it a win-win for you. And if all makes sense, I mean, think about this. If what I send you and you feel comfortable and confident that we can sell your home, you think you'd be interested in at least considering getting it back on the market with us? Okay, you don't have to say anything. Talk to your husband about it, and if there's a time, I'll follow up with you. I'll talk to Tony as well. At least we'll put a game plan together and uh, see if we can't get you in a little bit uh, better direction than what you've been in, okay? All right, and this is your best number to reach you, the number I just dialed? Okay, Jeanette. All right, we'll be back. Again, my name is Jeff Quinton, okay? I'll be back in touch with you.
All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye. Any other, uh, I guess you guys are doing some uh, just listed, just sold. We're doing just listed, just <clears throat> to sold. Fill, to fill the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. void of the. They're, they're smaller as far as uh, the percentages. <clears throat> sure. Because we have a lot of expires. We have a lot of old expires. So, you know, if we have a, a choice of calling a, a just listed or just <clears throat> sold versus someone who's actually been screaming to get their house sold before, we would rather be calling them because it's a higher percentage. People who want to sell, we know they're wanting to sell sure. versus the just listed. We do both. All right, and then and then what about online? Um, the home valuation leads, those yeah. kind of things. How are you guys doing with that? We're doing great. I mean, so you know, we have we have a, a tremendous amount from our different marketing through sure. all the you know our database and our constant contact. You know, I mentioned to you the market right, reports right. and things like that, and also through Infusionsoft. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll click here for home value. You know, sure. report, and so it drives it all back. So we're getting those, and then and then we. Um, they will come obviously immediately when they come in, and then they're the same thing. They're just over time. They're they're an inquiry of value, but they could be six months to, to a year down the road. I think a lot of those, you know, a general seller leads when they first start thinking about it. I think there's obviously ones that are looking to sell immediately, right? But then the agents miss out because they're not continually following up. They probably will want sell. Yeah six months to 18 months down the road. So you gotta have a program. Correct. What about the, the address only captures? Do you have a plan for that? And are you guys working that? We do, I mean, like, like for example, I mean, I, I, I usually, I, when they come in, we make the call, we try to figure out and find out the information right away. Sometimes sure. it takes a little bit more, a little longer. So I outsource it to, well, I, I send it to my staff to try to do it. Right. But then they're over time, and we have like in there, I don't know, at the time, a couple hundred of them, right? Sure. Six, seven hundred of them. Um, so I've actually been able to take that same list, mm -hmm. export it, send it to the same people that send and do my expireds. Right, the, the, in the VAs. Yeah, find out the phone numbers, email addresses, <laughs> cell phones and all that, bring it back in, and, sure. then, I, and then we call through all them. So, and I use my ISA to blast through them. Right, well. so it's the old concept too. And I think a lot of agents are saying, oh, I'm only getting five to 10% of people actually filling out the address. I'm getting all these just cat ad address captures. Sure. But like you said earlier on yeah. the expireds, if they're harder to get their information, that, that means they're not giving their information to everybody else. Exactly. So if you can get their information, you have their address, even um, if you can't get their phone number, go knock on their door, have somebody do that, sure. have a VA, research all their information, and even maybe put them on a snail mail mm -hmm. campaign. All, all of them, all of those, once we get their email addresses and everybody in their database, again, that's one thing that we're, we're very, uh, I learned from you, learned from f a ton of, of, of uh, like, you know, viral with, with, with Frank and about databases, right? Sure. We're, we're big on that. It's about capturing email addresses. Yeah. Or going cool. to find them, right. get that information, you put them in the system, have a system to communicate with them through email drips, something educational based. So we then adopt them as a potential seller. Sure. And then we put them in our, what would be as a potential seller campaign in sure. Infusionsoft. Uh -huh. So they're going to get dripped on. They're going to get dripped on with educa educational-based emails for the rest of their life. Yeah, and then you're putting them in the sold that's, so they can see all the exactly. sold. Exactly, yeah, yeah, And yeah. then so, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so, and that's when you guys are prospecting, even just listed, just sold. Yeah. Are you guys asking for the emails? Every time. I mean, so, so if we're doing just listed, just sold, or whichever it may be, you know, part of, uh, part of the script, or even with expireds that, have said, you know, I've decided not to sell, sure. or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. You know, part of our ending of our script is going to say, well, you know, we've been sending out a market report to all of your neighbors in the neighborhood. They're seeing the values of their home, whether they're going up or down. Sure. And you definitely want to know what's going on in the market, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they all do. So, okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and include you also in this report that all your neighbors are enjoying getting. What's your email address? Right. Oh, that'd be great. It's, you know, blah, 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 Gmail. And you get a yeah. high percentage of people giving your emails, right? Yeah, I mean, we, we I mean, geez, we, I mean, I think as a team, we're probably getting um, with that all. I mean, 20, 25, even more, maybe a day. A day. Yeah, yeah. And you guys are hundred, and, and hundred a week. I mean, think about that over time. I and mean, that's why right. our database is able to build. I mean, some days we get more than that. Sure. Yeah. So, know? so, so, so now I that mean, you said that's just us asking for them, right? right? Getting them. That doesn't include the ones that are where I have someone else going out and getting them. Right. And, right. And then bring them in. Like, it if we have thirty expires, well. I'm going to go out We're and try to get, trying all 30, to get that all through them. data yeah, augmentation. All, them. all right, and then um, buyers. So, how are you guys getting all your buyers, or you know, how's that look? So, our, you know, our buyers, um, you know, it's all assortment again through a lot of referrals. Uh huh. So, past clients and influence referrals. Um, also, agent referrals. We we also work agent referrals. We've got a database of what we call as local and non-local mm -hmm. agents. 
So agents that are outside of the area referring their buyers to us. Um, so that's a, that's a, a source. Um, you know, we also have all of our online presence as well. So we're sure. dominating there and driving them all back to our right. Real, Real Geek site. Right. Uh -huh. So from Zillow and Chulia, right. uh, Realtor.com, we don't spend a ton of money, you know, in that area. No. Um, when you have 90 some listings. Yeah, so you probably get a lot from sign calls too, mm -hmm. right? We got a tremendous amount of sign calls mm -hmm. and then just our own website. And then there's the inside of that, the Real Geek site for those buyer searches, sure. you know, that's on that. So driving them all different ways back to that. Right. Um, so that's primarily where they're, where it's coming from. I mean, Zillow, we do, uh, we are a premier agent. I think our, our ad spend is about just under a thousand bucks a month. So sure, it's and you're getting a good a ROI on that. Yeah, Otherwise, get, you wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, I know we get you. we get about <laughs> yeah we get about almost about an eight to ten percent. Uh, you know, eight times. To ten times, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, last year, if we did, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it was probably like fifteen deals of the of the say sure. eighty buyer sales or whatever, and average commission ten grand, one hundred fifty grand. I spent fifteen grand, so that's ten times. Right, know? so yeah. ten times, yeah. eight to yeah. ten yeah. times yeah. ROI, mm -hmm. which is great, tremendous, right. and that's why I look at it and track it. <clears throat> All right, and and just so you know, he loves referrals, and if you're a pre you know, if you're watching this and you have anybody to refer here in the Jersey Shores. Jeff Quinton's your man, so um, he's here doing this for fr um, for free, just you know, sharing because he's got the same mindset I grew up with, you know, the masterminding and sure. sharing, and and so if you do have a referral, this is my commercial for you. I love it. Uh, if you have a referral for the Jersey Shores, please look up Jeff Quinton and send him any referrals you got. We cover basically all of Atlantic and Cape May County, so everywhere from Atlantic City, or actually Brigantine all the way to Cape May, that's all on the Jersey Shore, right? Right. And then inland as well on the mainland side. Right. So, right. and we're expanding out as well. So, you know, a lot of a major portion of our clients do come to the Philadelphia suburb area mm -hmm. and outside of Philly. So, mm -hmm. we're going to be expanding there too. So, in the nice. future, look for that, and we'll be working awesome. that area. All right. And I just want to get a little bit of follow up on the buyer stuff. Um, on the Zillow leads, what do you? What's that process look like? Because you know they they send in an email most yes. you, most of the time. Sometimes they'll call. Mm -hmm. What do you guys do for the follow up? And what's the procedure if you don't actually book an appointment? Okay, so there's a couple of thoughts uh, and, and processes. So if someone inquires through Zillow, the very first thing that happens it then gets pushed directly into a Real Geek site. Uh huh. So they come into the Real Geek site, and then from there it goes into a round robin. Sure. So now it's assigned to an agent. Uh -huh. And also when it's assigned to an agent, it's also then copied to our ISA. Okay. So the agent isn't able to call right away. Mm -hmm. ISA is going to call, try to be the first responder. Sure. And then kind of set the appointment and pre-qualify, whichever mm -hmm. it may be. So that's how we get the contact going and who it's assigned to. Sure. Also we have it set up that in the moment they come into the Real Geek site, it then also pushes out the Infusionsoft long-term buyer inquiry, sure. uh, okay. long-term buyer uh, mm -hmm. um, campaign. Sure. Immediately within like a minute or so, there's a video with me on it that comes back and say, thanks, it just pops up. Thanks for inquiring on our listing. Sure. Um, and it says something like, I'm on an appointment now, mm -hmm. but one of my sales rep, uh, sales agents is gonna be right back to you. Are you uh, using BombBomb bomb for that or? Uh, Infusionsoft through oh, Infusionsoft, yeah, okay, great. It right out. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, uh, and then mm -hmm. it, so, so, so it comes, comes right back at them. Like, Hey, uh, we're on, I'm on an appointment, but one of my sales guys are going to be right back to you to get all the information. Right. So, then so, so letting them know, hey, we got it. We're going we're gonna to be on it. All right. Exactly. And then it comes into the uh, Real Geeks website. Mm -hmm. Are you guys actually, when they're talking to them, are you trying to set them up on a property search on the Real Geeks website of to course. get them off Zillow? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Of course. So, so ultimately, <laughs> uh, there's going to be an email that again goes out, expl mm -hmm. explains to them that um, a questionnaire that we're going to request, a quick sure. they can fill out so we can get more information from them. Uh, telling them that about going to our Jersey Shore Real Estate Search.com Real Geek site to go there to register. That's all going to come back automated. And then our sales guys are going to call, not only just pre qualify them, mm -hmm. and then yes, let them know uh, based upon where to go to search the MLS through our site and then ask them all the pre-qualifying questions and then letting them know, getting permission that we're gonna put them in the Real Geek site so they, as an active, uh, active search. Sure. And they'll receive properties from us based upon their criteria. Right. You know, and on a daily basis. So we right. put them all in there. All right, so you can then keep uh, dripping on them and cultivate yeah. them. Absolutely. Now. All right, great. We're big on database, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I mean. If someone comes in, we're gonna capture them <clears throat> and we're gonna take them and we're gonna put them in something uh -huh. that's gonna communicate to them. Sure based upon what they're looking for and segment in the right way so they get the right content at the right time right. and you know, consistent. Well, and, and the key though is you're not just allowing this automation and just dripping them, you guys are also calling oh, them, calling call them. Yeah, up. of course, yeah, yeah. I just want people to understand that. Some, yeah. thing, some people, they want to automate everything 
to the point where they think that the people are going to actually call them. No. You'll get some calls, but you really got to keep calling. It's really a people business. Right? The, the key is right now is is it's the automation is great and the intelligence that you receive from seeing the automation, if you're uh -huh. done right, like on your site, which is awesome, is like this morning, um, you know, I just went into all of our hot leads. Sure. And I downloaded it and, and, and S, 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 what is it called? S, CSV or whatever. Yeah, CSV, right. right. Exported all them out. Sure. There's 83 hot in uh -huh. there, okay? Which is probably too much. It's, there's, a lot of them probably have gone cold. Right. But I said, okay, here's the 83, and I sent them to my VA. Uh huh. Uh, and said, okay, look, I want you to, and she already knows the script, call all, the, all of them right now. These are all the hot ones. I want to know. At what level of temperature? Where, yeah, where are yeah, they? Where scale, are they at? Scale of one at? to ten. Have you sure. already bought and we don't know about it? Right. You know, they've gone cold, where they are, call all of them today, hit them all, and start to figure out where they right. are. So what's cool is on your site is you can see and, and categorize who they are, what they're doing, and then also when I did that, I took the hots and then sorted them to the most recent active. Sure. So there's people in there virtually one minute to back like two hours, and that was at eight o'clock in the morning. So people on, the, on that site at 6 a.m. So you're just using the filters within real games. Using the filters, all right. that, sending it out, and then calling them. So, and then whatever the, the, whatever comes out of that, then it'll go back to the guy, to the agent who was already assigned to. Sure, you know? okay. So we're always calling, we're calling right. through all the time. Right. The agents, you know, outsourcing, blasting through, email drip, the whole deal. Hey, I would like to thank Jeff for uh, being the first thank one you. of our new yeah. um, venture, keeping it real on location. So if you really enjoyed this, look for more to come. We're going to be uh, focused on producing one of these a month. And we're going to be going all over the country, my team and I. We're going to be putting together these, uh, these live, or not live, recorded episodes of Keeping It Real on location. And we'll be sending them out to you. And then you're going to be able to tune in one week after we produce them. And we'll have a Q&A with our guests. So after, uh, after you watch this, have your questions ready because we're going to be doing a Q&A with Jeff. So all the questions that you have that we didn't answer, be ready for a live Google Hangout. All right, thanks a lot for tuning in, man. Aloha. Keeping It Real on Location is produced by Real Geeks. Visit keepingitreal.com to opt in and be notified by email so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. You can follow us on Facebook where we're constantly posting educational and training material. You can also follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. To find out more about Real Geeks and what we offer, you can visit our website at www.realgeeks.com.